starting out the content of this video, let's look at the March 2023 Faculty Senate Packet by the University of Nebraska at Kearney Faculty Senate. Now mind you, this so-called Faculty Senate was not actually elected by anyone. It's not really a Senate. And the first thing that we'll look at, which is on page five, there's an interesting section that states by an individual named Saidi. This is, quote, this is a global issue, high-ranking universities on it. They find a solution and we can follow suit. I've replaced written papers with videos demonstrating skills. This could be a charge to new CTE to develop diverse methods of assessment. I wonder what those high-ranking institutions are and what exactly is meant by a high-ranking university. Indeed, very interesting. And also in another section on page 11, it states that retention is at a 14-year low and that this is happening nationwide. Now, that might not be a positive thing for them, but it certainly is for me and I'm certain for most of humanity because anybody who comes out of these institutions is usually trained to be a ignorant operative. Also, on page 11, it states that large grant proposal being prepared for Buffett Foundation. I wonder if that's the Warren Buffett one. And as we know, a lot of these funding opportunities really aren't. They're just a, another money laundering scheme and a method to fund conquest. And it states that Center for Teaching Excellence is part of this. Career Center is important. Advising reform, there's that word again, CTE, to define advising best practices. Looking to even advertising loads and blah, blah, blah. And it gives some names of the representation. Now, in a different part, we get into the more sinister aspects of this particular document. On page 15, it states that under studies, change course number, old value 314, new value 214. Oh, and again, when, when they shift around these courses, this is just the same sort of shell game that's practiced at many layers of so-called modern society today. But it doesn't get its start in the universities. All the universities do love to practice these. And this shifting of arbitrary names and numbers and things like that and all of this stuff that they do where they move around their courses, it's just the shell game. It's where uh, nothing ever gets held to account because they won't stop changing and moving things and shifting it. Although they're not very creative at it, so it's usually easy to track down such as in this context it says change general study status old value no new value yes change catalog description old value problems concerning religious language the nature and existence of god and the purpose and meaning of religious life including criticism thereof new value this course will raise and address problems concerning religious language the nature and existence of God or gods and the purpose of meaning of living a religious life including criticism thereof now if that doesn't sound like a course that's designed for a psychological operation and the ability to manipulate religion and religious language well then but let's continue on to the other aspects that just continue to get more interesting Next, on page four, it states under unfinished slash old business, a resolution on strategic plan. So here they are forming strategies, which will probably include tactics. And all of these other words that members of the military forces are known to use. Under Van Ingen, it states in the fourth, where, whereas you mentioned plan, but leave out strategic. Add strategic in front of all plans to be consistent. We'll need to add fourth and sixth whereas. Now this is a perfect example of how these people operate. They don't care so much about what words mean or how you use them, but rather how it's perceived when you use them. So this person wants 
strategic to be added for consistency. Not because the word strategic actually means anything, but because they want it to be consistent. So they don't really care about what the word strategic means, they just want it to be consistently used. And the word whereas actually does have a meaning, but the reason why they want to add whereas is because that is a legal jargon term, as they might call it. Now, it does actually have a meaning, but in the way that they use it, these words have no meaning because they just use it for the perception of meaning. And this is the mind of essentially what some might call a bureaucrat, but more appropriately defined as a subversive agent whose purpose is to destroy meaning of words by misusing them in a constant and continuous manner. That sort of idea of if you repeat something long enough, people start believing it. The uh, numbness, the imparting numbness through continuously beating something, the beating the dead horse type of thing. They keep doing the same thing no matter how many times they're told it's wrong or they shouldn't do it because they're doing it with the intent of subversion. So they repeat this stuff constantly and it gets ingrained and then words start meaning nothing because they're being used in ways that they're not intended to be used for. And this is an emphasis on that. Somebody whose entire note has to do with formality, so-called formality, doing something that is a formula. Next, for some more interesting notes on page 9, it states that SVCAA collects reports on outcomes of all academic integrity violation cases, but students are not tracked for multiple violations. At least one department has set up their own tracking system. So here they are directly stating that they do indeed track students. Now I would imagine that that tracking system would come very close to a blacklist. The socialist system of identifying people with so-called uh, low social credit score, meaning they don't do things that are quote approved, that person gets put on a list and then that in reality impacts their life and then that person doesn't understand why because it's done clandestinely and you find evidence of it in these documents of all of these unelected officials who think that they rule over us as vice chancellors and all of these other nonsensical terms that they like to give themselves now in the October 2021 faculty senate packet to go back into the past a little bit we get some more interesting details of the nefarious and insidious and most importantly diabolical activities of this institution and the people that pretend to run it on page 13 at the bottom it states under number nine alter course title prerequisites course description CYBR Cyber 435 Reverse Engineering Thinking Like an Adversary So here we get a description of a course which has the entire intent of creating hackers but more importantly seeks to impart the element of thinking like an adversary so this is a course that is designed in its own description to make useful hackers for the university and so here we get a direct link through evidence to the hacker core of petty scammers and others that are not actually well versed or extremely capable with technology they just know some of the basic tricks and motives and they think themselves these uh, fast and loose high-end uh, capable hackers and things like that but they're really just um, doing things that are, are basic with uh, the concept of causing damage and of course the university does not care about whatever happens to the students for any sort of unlawful or 
uh, horrible actions that they are trained to do because what the university is doing with this course is they're seeking to basically make a bunch of useful pawns willing pawns at least and forming them as a sort of ignorant hacker core that also serves the double purpose of being a scapegoat so here you get a uh, evidence of that and then you've got of course uh, system side security reverse engineering and multiple mentions of thinking like an adversary and it states that this course will cover all concepts necessary to play a fence against different types of enterprise networks and systems red team so now you're playing offense different scenarios will be played out utilizing a series of hands-on labs with the idea that students will learn the concept of thinking like an adversary and there you go they are essentially describing exactly what i stated which is a group of ignorant hackers that serve the double purpose of being scapegoats for carrying out the malicious activities of the people at this institution and in this so-called faculty senate now among my correspondence with this institution and the rather reprehensible individuals that seem to infest it i received a response to my va complaint from the school which is as you might expect it states that quote uh, dated February 20th, 2023, reference case number 09369438, via GI fit, Bill Feedback Tool. Dear valued VA customer, Stephen Christopher Wright Coleman Rush, in reference to the case number above, I understand that you have communicated concerns about multiple professors via email and posted these on public social networks, specifically YouTube. Your feedback to the Departments of Veterans Affairs indicates you are uncertain what corrective measures would be effective. Nor do you believe you are in a position to offer suggestions for resolution. Your expressed concerns and commentary have been considered by university officials from various perspectives and instructors have sought to resolve these concerns on several occasions. Your communications do not establish a substantive, substantive case. That's not the right word. Sincerely, Kelly Bartling, Vice Chancellor, Enrollment Management. So this letter is clearly intended to get under my skin, which may or may not have. But either way, there's few things to note in this letter, which are very interesting. First, this letter actually would have the opposite effect on me, because when she states specifically YouTube, and that I, quote, posted these on public social networks, that tells me that I'm important enough to her to actually go to those public social networks and look at what I'm doing, which means that what I've done actually does have an impact, and that these people so intent on optics and how they are perceived, they take it very personally when somebody damages their image of these sort of pariahs or, or priests, lords and ladies of the education institution. And so she's basically just telling me that my efforts have actually been fruitful. They have been effective. And so that, rather than get under my skin, is actually more of a, a note of encouragement, <laughs> which is rather ironic. And another thing that she notes in this letter, this response, is a omission, or I should say more of a declaration of knowledge, direct knowledge, of conclusion, collusion between this institution and the Department of Veterans Affairs. This individual knows they reached out to the Department of Veterans Affairs will do nothing. They know that. And the only way they can know that is if there is direct collusion indeed between these two institutions and entities working against the interests of veteran students and for their own interests of whatever little corrupt scheme that they're running. That of course couldn't be more obvious. But here we do get a actual overt declaration 
from this person of knowledge that making a complaint to the VA will do nothing and will quote then that I'm quote uncertain what corrective measures would be effective stating of course the Department of Veterans Affairs has no effective corrective measures despite providing a boatload of money to these institutions just like all of these other fraudulent government outfits acting under the color of law and not being a real government uh, legitimacy anyway now what this rather arrogant and amusing response tells me is that this situation is very similar to what was depicted in the Return of the King video or movie in which the Eye of Sauron was distracted and the intention attention of that eye was taken by Aragorn when he charged at the enemies at the Black Gate of Mordor as was depicted in the movie and this is essentially the same idea because all of my actions regardless of of what level of effectiveness they are are in fact gaining the attention of these people which means that their intentions will be less focused on others that they would otherwise be abusing that might be under their influence or control Now let's get into that concept of that one thing that shall not be named, or at least multiple things that shall not be named, which are all associated with very familiar themes of the past few years, starting around 2020. And this starts out in the October 2021st Senate packet. In the area titled summary of the work completed by the ad hoc faculty senate that thing committee september 2021 let's take a look at the amusing names that are put under this committee and of course most of these people are so dense and humorless that they probably wouldn't even notice the amusing nature of the people that have been put here and one of those it's a person by the name of megan strain and the other by the name of David Vale. Highly amusing names for the type of committee they're alleged to be a part of. Now, there is a letter. A very interesting and highly damning letter. <laughs> it states, Dear Christensen and Cabinet, Oh, oh, oh. Dear Chancellor Christensen and Cabinet, serving on behalf of the UNK Faculty Senate, we, the Ad Hoc Faculty Senate Thing Committee, have been charged, uh, charged, I mean, they charged themselves, of course, but anyway, they have been charged by themselves with submitting a request to the UNK administration, specifically faculty, them, of course, they're the faculty that have, quote, expressed concern about the lack of faculty involvement. Yeah. Them, their involvement as it relates to UNK's that thing mitigation efforts in the context of this issue we hope to work together to improve in two major areas quote shared governance and transparency uh, again another example of that double speak that's so present today shared governance has been has been not is, but has been defined, of course it has been defined by them, as a process in which faculty and administrators actively engage to share responsibility for identifying and pursuing an aligned set of mission-driven, sustainable outcomes and priorities. And naturally, whenever they decide to overcomplicate something, then they are speaking in code, Doing so with intent, again, that mens rea, state of mind, they are of the state of mind to know what they're doing requires codification of language, which is what they're doing here. They're codifying their language to try and hide what they're actually saying, basically, which means as soon as something becomes convoluted and annoying, that's the time to pay attention to it. In continuation, the goal of shared governance is to improve processes and outcomes and propel a university to achieve its mission. 
Core elements of shared governance include interdependence, communication, and, well, that's interesting, and dot join L, planning and effort. It's probably a typo, but who knows with these people. They are clearly operatives who are coding their language, so that, that could be a coded message, or it could just be a typo. Never really know. The quote-unquote, or the thing, that thing pen, pen, pen thing, I, 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 I'm actually not even going to say either of those two words, but anyway, the thing thing has placed UNK and our community in a unique and challenging circumstance. While we know more about that thing than we did a year ago, there is still much that is unknown. <sighs> this is some more coded language for you. Some more clandestine communication. When circumstances present increased uncertainty in a university setting, there is an associated increase need for communication, joint planning, and effort among administration, faculty, staff, and students. Therefore, in alignment with shared governance, we are, are asking in good faith for increased communication and joint planning efforts related to the thing thing. We are not attempting to dictate specific policies or courses of action. Instead, we hope to reestablish a better method of working together to address the challenges that the thing presents to our campus. While faculty have been informed of decisions related to the thing and have met with administration through the Faculty Senate Ex Executive Committee, faculty continue to feel a lack of communication from the administration related to the thing decisions and have been left out of opportunities to, to participate in joint planning. Following summary illustrates this perspective. From the start of the thing, planning in the spring of 2020, faculty involvement in planning our thing response has been inconsistent. Representatives of the Faculty Senate and UNKEA were invited to join the large UNK task force dominated by staff and administrators the day of their first meeting. But over time, our representation became so minimal that the Faculty Senate and UNKEA decided to form a separate faculty task force to recommend specific steps. Ha! Yeah, what a shock there. They do love to form themselves into groups and to dictate to themselves charges and responsibilities and to play their little game. They really don't change and they're not very creative either. UNK Faculty Senate Resolution on Shared... Uh, that's not the title. Possibly. Goi Geyunse. Geyunse? Don't know how to spell to say that. But it's also not shared. It's Sherical. Dot. Goi Geyunse. Throughout the 2020 academic year, the consultation between faculty and administrators improved as there was more communication on important issues related to the thing decision making. However, there has been no formal consultation, UNK task force, or consistent involvement by faculty representatives in our 2021-2022 plans. Since the start of the thing, UNK KEA and the Faculty Senate has asked to have faculty representation and leadership group develop our overall thing mitigation plan and the shifts in phasing. These requests have either been declined or ignored. That's an interesting note. Since the start of the we have asked Oh I said it. Oh boy. Since the start of the thing we have asked about the specific criteria that will trigger shifting of phases with the little response from the administration. We express our desire to move away from what currently feels like an opaque and perhaps oppositional relationship and return to an interdependent relationship. Oh, sounds like he's talking to a girlfriend. We feel that embracing shared governance related to the thing thing will lead to better outcomes for students and for the university as a whole. Yeah, better outcomes. <laughs> we are not opponents of each other, but instead can be on the same team as we battle an ever-present thing affecting our campus and our community. Sounds more like the uh, threat of loss of control. That's, that's the ever-present thing affecting their campus and their community don't want to lose control little control freaks here the uh, so-called Karens 
As it relates to the response to the thing, there are multiple ways to increase shared governance. We highlight a few possibilities, but would welcome additional or alternate uh, approaches as well. Again, we reiterate that our hope is not to dominate or dictate university thing planning. We are simply asking to be once again included in the process. On behalf of the UNK Faculty Senate, we request that the administration consider the following ideas. <laughs> That the UNK Faculty Senate and UNKEA each have a member attend and participate in the bi-weekly thing monitoring team meetings. Bi-weekly meetings would include a chance for faculty to ask questions aimed at improving the university thing plan and process. An alternate but similar approach would to have bi-weekly updates to the Faculty Senate's ad hoc thing committee with the opportunity for the committee members to ask questions and seek clarification. Oh. That faculty be allowed and encouraged to offer input as decisions are made while faculty members have a full spectrum of opinions on most issues, including thing. The opportunity to hear the myriad of views from faculty can benefit administration while it makes challenging decisions regarding thing protocols. That the administration work with faculty to identify clear and declared thresholds that will lead to a change of phases outlined within the thing protocols. Means to increase transparency. While faculty may not always agree with every decision administration must make, a shared governance model wherein faculty perspectives are considered can foster a more productive working relationship instead of one that generates suspicion. Yeah, because these people certainly don't engage in anything that's suspicious. Over time, a lack of transparency can erode trust between faculty and administration and negatively impact the work environment. We respectfully ask for increased clarity, consistency, and openness in communication, specifically as it relates to thing developments. Opportunities to increase this transparency of communication include, but are not limited to, a clear description of the decision-making process to move between the thing response phases. A clear and regularly updated thing dashboard that contains the number of active cases among students, staff, and faculty, as well as the number of fully thinged individuals in each of those categories and description of where data is drawn from. Yeah, I wonder why they would want to know that. Unrelated note and explanation of how off-campus tests are accounted for and reported data among students, staff, and faculty would be appreciated. Yeah, would be appreciated. Uh, I'm sure. Clear description of testing policies and procedures, particularly for students and others on campus who have been exposed to individuals who tested uh, positive for the thing, but are asymptomatic. Description of how all processes are in fact being enacted as prescribed in the plan, such as form of monitoring and assessment to identify areas of improvement. Share information with campus before it is sent to community news organizations such as the Kearney Hub, AG student thinged survey results. An updated FAQ document that addresses changes that have been have occurred since the school year began. Tested student health now being discouraged for exposure slash asymptomatic folks. What to do if a student does not comply with PHC? Are, are thing students still exempt from quarantine after exposure? Can they be told to thing for 10 days if exposed? All sorts of laws and things being broken here, but you know, I guess if uh, better go big or go home, right? And then finally, include a link to the updated FAQ documents in the weekly co uh, thing email. Mention changes to the document if relevant and perhaps include other updates in the mail email aside from case numbers, e.g. how seating charts are being used. A link to the Two Rivers Dial status. It's an interesting note, maybe it might worth, be worth looking into. While we understand there may be limitations that we are not aware of preventing some of these requests, we hope that our efforts lead to increased explanation, discussion, and collaboration. Yeah, I'm sure they do. These unelected Karen twits, these self-imposed and self-charged directors and dictators of 
life, liberty, and happiness. <laughs> we reached out in good faith and reiterate our hope to discuss and enact means to increase and improve shared governance, transparency, and communication. Yeah, there's there's a, a fun word there. Shared governance. <laughs> Quite ridiculous. Signed, Bobby Lubig, Benjamin Mal. Chick, Mouches, Chick, yeah, whatever. Megan Strain and David Vale. Those last two names are quite amusing. Next, it is very important to note that on page five, this uh, so-called faculty senate can be quoted as "make a quick recommendation." for you and Kate to adopt a thing mandate by the faculty senate. So here, they charge themselves with the ability to make mandates. And a quick one at that. Also, it states that report on faculty response to a potential mandate for faculty thingings not full data to give yet, but it looks like a majority would support a mandate. Yeah, I wonder what majority that would be. Probably all of them, because they're all the majority. Especially in their really diluted and moronic eyes. In continuation in the March 2023, that's the recent Faculty Senate packet, Let's look at some more rather interesting evidence of their clandestine efforts at this institution that they pretend is their, quote, domain and their realm or their <laughs> area of shared governance. It states, Tiffany Hoff from the Counseling Center presented information on the health needs of students. Yeah. That sounds like a pretty serious violation of confidential information. The need is so great that more focus should be put on wellness in courses. There's some coded language there. Referral to the Counseling Center is insufficient. There are waiting lists. Emotional wellness, skills for coping with stress and anxiety and social wellness, combating loneliness and social anxiety are the greatest needs some more vague coded language activities and workshops are offered but student attendance is a problem notice that last bit activities and workshops are offered but student attendance is a problem <laughs> might be a problem for this person but it's not a problem for students or anyone else who doesn't want them their uh information on health needs being shared with this so-called faculty senate. <laughs> Quite amazing. And she provided a link to the faculty guide from the JED Foundation that people can download. She also indicated that she would provide a list of resources to Greg Brown, whoever that is, to, to be subsequently shared with council members. So, Perhaps it's the Greg Brown who's actually doing the the dirty deed itself. Who knows? This would definitely take a lot more investigation, but uh, I'm sure that these people have already done that. <laughs> Formed a committee and investigated themselves, as always seems to be the case. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this content, please like the video, share it, subscribe to my channel, check out any other content I may have, and there are free books, of books available at the link. And also, if you would like to support my work, you can do so at PayPal or Cash App. Thank you.